Welcome to The Record Player, everybody. Today, my guest is an icon in Canadian music, uh, a true artist in every sense of the word. Uh, she spent four decades recording and performing um, songs like Mimi on the Beach, One More Color, uh, Calling All Angels are timeless, and her voice is definitely unmistakable. I'm so happy to be joined by Jane Sibri. How are you today, Jane? Um, fabulous. How about you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. The weather couldn't be better, and, uh, and life is good at the moment, so... Uh, well, yeah. not everywhere, obviously, but uh, no, uh, right. you're you're currently in Toronto, still. Or? Yeah, I am. But I think about um, I think about if the same thing happened to us in Canada, like what it would be like, and where we'd reach out for help, and um, how we'd handle it if our city square got bombed, and um, and then thinking about how I don't know. You talk to some of the elders who are now like leaving us in in uh, great numbers and they're more like just tough it out you know you don't you don't whine about it you just be grateful and you don't go to therapy about it um <laughs> <That's right. laughs> i'm glad to live in this age where we have um the more tools available to us it shows it shows in people well, therapy can certainly be a good thing for uh, for for things like that. I mean, unfortunately, over there, that's not something that's available to them right now. I mean, uh, it's it's uh, bad things happening in the world for sure, and we are lucky to be where we are. Um, have you ever been to that side of the world? You have you ever toured through that side of the world? I I haven't. No, I've been in as close as Germany, but no, not not east. But um, I like that. I like how it's more global now, like Romania says, OK, you can all come here. Poland says you can all come here. Like that seems such a way to go, you know, and that and that if something happened here or to the Americans, we would say you can all come here. Just opening doors just um, dissolves country borders, which were decided on by people we probably don't really respect as being of a higher consciousness. So it seems more the natural way to do things and that dissolves borders. All this, you know, let's do the sensible thing. Just come here. I love it. To have it's, the leadership. it's very interesting to watch it. To have the leadership that they have right now as well and have somebody who is standing up and, and uh, you know, fighting for his country the way that he is is certainly a good thing as well. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Um, you grew up in, uh, in Etobicoke. Uh, I want to touch down on your career a little bit. You grew up in Etobicoke, um, went to Guelph Uni University of Guelph, mm -hmm. um, which is a stone's throw away from where I am right now in Georgetown, Ontario. Uh, yeah. you, when you, uh, first started, it was in Guelph that you started playing clubs and, and that kind of thing, uh, while you were in school, right? Yeah. I played at the outdoor cafe, the bull ring and the university center and, <laughs> Um, then in the um, little couple folk clubs opened up and I'd play there and yeah it was really the beginning of it all and I I thrived well I throve I thrived well <laughs> um, being away from home as many people do because we have to um, find our new edges of our expansion and so I was um I loved being on such a beautiful campus and then I was directing my own studying and stuff like that and um, I thrived on it and blossomed into like writing more songs and um, and then I switched to the sciences because I um, I did find the music courses and the English courses a very very tiring I had trouble staying awake and, and it didn't stimulate me and I had to take one class for art students, one science class and I'd come out of there just almost ecstatic with orders, having understood something about the order of the universe which I didn't really understand before but, and so I did switch into the sciences and um, I'd left at grade nine to be an art student. I said I don't need any sciences. Wrong, wrong, wrong. But You almost was, became a biologist, didn't you? Well, I got a major in microbiology, but it was just to be practical, um, you know, so I could work in a lab, but I really preferred the physics and chemistry and straight biology. But I did get a rabbit out of it that <laughs> we were supposed to inject with salmonella and stuff. And so I took it and he had a 
short but completely complete life. That's good. Um, you, uh, most people do things the other way. They go to school for something and, and take the music classes to have that outlet. Um, you, uh, oh. have, you're, you were the pure example of having a backup plan. You definitely wanted that. Um, your first record was released independently and it did well enough to allow you to record uh, the, your second record, which um, is what kind of took off for you. Uh, no Borders Here, which is this one right here. Jane Sibri, No Borders Here. Um, the, my first recollection of you was the, the music video for uh, um, Mamie on the Beach. Uh, I think I was about 13 or 14 at the time when I saw that. Aww. And <laughs> my first reaction to it was how different. It was just unique. It was something that, that wasn't out there that I had never seen. Um, nowadays, there's so many uh, avenues available and tools available to get music out there. Um, back then it was the music video age. I mean, is that something that you embraced and, and that kind of helped you with your with your career at that point in time? Oh, yeah. Uh, um, it was all about n learning about new things, and that's always exciting. So, yeah, music videos. And I'm, I th used to think I was a more natural painter than a musician because I see things right away, clearly. And I've learned how to not question it. Like if I, uh, if I see a red background, I now don't go through all the other colors to be sure I'm pretty um so uh I um the videos were really important and I learned a lot and it's given me a toolkit for now where I've done my own tv show etc but um uh I I was part of the very first stream of people doing it which is why I think I got notoriety. They didn't really have much choice except this sort of quirky video that was um, eight minutes, but they cut it down. And, and so it was almost like a fluke, but I don't believe in flukes. It's like the universe found a way to push me forward that I really appreciated and benefited from. Meanwhile, there were so many other talented people or more talented, but for some reason that... Um, but you were really comfortable with the video process. You were you were really comfortable doing it. You were really comfortable behind the camera, in front of the camera as well. Was I? Yeah. I think so. I mean. Oh I well, no, no, I was. I'm glad you think so. But I mean, <laughs> it's it's a pretty microscopic world being a musician and seeing myself on screen, like on video or in photo shoots. It's like, wh what's wrong with my face? Like, why am I, <laughs> why am I not reading? And why is this person reading? And what is it about? I learned so much about that, about myself, which wasn't, well, it was good in the long run, but yeah. there, <laughs> I'm there glad was, you thought I was comfortable. It, it looked it to me. Um, there was a, uh, when I knew that you were coming on with me, I went back and, and rewatched something that I remember watching on Much Music um, way back when, uh, the the documentary, um, it was called I Muse Aloud, I believe it was a one hour yeah. documentary. And what I really took from that documentary was that you were, really involved with every single aspect of your career more so than i think a lot of people at that time um you were involved from everything from the stage show the choreography the the you know the the wardrobe um was there ever any pressure from the record company f to do things differently to, to sort of push you in a different direction and you were steadfast on this is what i'm doing yeah no there were a few points um they brought in someone a stylist um who wanted me to wear like jumpsuits and things like that and so that 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 was an attempt but it, it didn't feel right um i'm always open and i'm always letting people try different makeup or hairstyles on me because i'm just always wondering curious um there was another point when i signed with um uh let's see in the states first i signed with windham hill and then a and m came and took over that and then warner brothers started coming to my shows and they took over A&M's contract and they wanted to um, have full control. And that's one thing I said is, I don't think it'll do you or me much good if things are damped down because of contra instruction. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I did end up with uh, perfect creative control for my Warner reprise re recordings, which which I think is best because I was producing them or very involved with the production and it exaggerated what I have. And that I think is always good, you know, larger than life. Um, that's what I would do if I was a record 
um, producer or uh, an A&R person, I'd, I'd say, um, take this demo back and send me something that's more of you, of your essence, you know, your time on earth. And um, don't, don't guess what I'm going to like. Um, be your most interesting self. As a matter of fact, I learned that in a songwriting workshop. Um, can I keep going? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> in, in the States where they had um, all of these different song teachers and I was, they asked me to, of all things. And so my tent had about 10 people and everyone else's tents were like hundreds. <laughs> but um, I had a great time and I've, I started out by asking them to tell me one of the favorite stories in their life and then went around and um, now play me a song that you think is really good. And and I watched everyone in the group. Um, their eyes had been so engaged watching this person tell a story. And they were, everyone was energized. They were given energy from where? From the person telling the story was drawing down something that was contagious. And then they sang their songs and slowly I watched everyone's eyes like um, the people under, you know, they were no longer looking deeply with deep energy or whatever it is. And, um, and most were boring. And I said, well, then all I would say is that write a song um, as close to how you told the story and about things that you told the story about and forget all the other ones and you know so that you're in service to offering a wonderful banquet that um n nourishes rather than you know wasting people's time being disengaged and they're too polite to leave sort of thing so um that might sound a bit harsh but but i, I think it was i think it was true and i do think that we've sort of we have to rethink a lot of things that we're doing in a knee-jerk way now. So I'm trying to do that anyway. Was there a point, I, I, I thought I remember uh, hearing that you at one point had all, practically made a record, but you decided you're, you, I'm not releasing this because I don't like it. It's it's too much like the previous one. It's too much like stuff I've done in the past. Um, are you very critical of your own work? Uh, my body is very critical, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you just feel uncomfortable in your gut. And I didn't make a whole whole record I don't think but but definitely an example is when I did um the walking which was I think my fourth record and it was so intense and filmic and um me that I felt that being me for the next record was tiring isn't that an odd thing so I did Bound by the Beauty Pardon? You wanted to be different. You wanted to reinvent yourself every record, I think. Yeah, why do we want to be different? Is it just an ego thing or or does our Yeah, it just you just repetition is tiring. And and sometimes it's joyful, like Prince said, but um certain repetitions are tiring. And people smell a rat immediately. You can you can get so much information from people listening. Um so I tried to remove anything that was too like Jane Sibri and um, that was really interesting exercise so I did more straight songs and um, country-ish songs and I think it still sounded coherent with my through line but um, but that was an important exercise for me as an artist and then the next one was um, when I was a boy which I let be free again uh, how how have you been in, throughout your career with comparisons? I know in the early days you were compared to, um, you know, people like Laurie Anderson and, and Kate Bush. And um, I even remember Peter Gabriel, that kind of comparison to more of an art rock, they called it back then. Um, how, how were you with those comparisons? <clears throat> well, um, I think there's something in, innate in all of us that wants to be, doesn't want to be... Um, inveigled into someone else's energy field. So we, we want to be original. We want to be ourselves. Um, um, authentic is what we see in nature. And I think we unconsciously want to align ourselves with those principles. So um, I didn't really see why 
people would compare me to Laurie Anderson, I didn't really like her. And um, I respect her, but I didn't really find what I look for in music, in her music. Um, just more of a like heart connection, I guess. It's knowing how to turn chords at the right time and um, something that I guess I've, did, my heart trains me to look for it. Anyway, um, so, and Joni Mitchell, fair enough, like I grew up, I was like 13 listening to her, but then I, I stopped listening to her when I thought I was being too um, swayed by her, um, and Suzanne Vega, that was just because we were out at the same time. I, I found myself more similar to, um, I, I, who, who would I say, maybe? Laura Nairo. Neil Young in a strange way. I don't know. Well, you're very folky roots as well that you started with. So um, what um, what was it like being kind of in the height of your career and you get asked to come and do the, the Northern Lights project and getting to work with people like Neil Young and Joni Mitchell and people that you admired growing up? What was that uh, experience like? Oh, exciting. <laughs> and, and shortly afterwards, I... I was no longer a fan of Prince or yeah, I lost that ability to be a fan where you're so excited. It's like sexual energy, but it's not in that it's like way beyond your everyday energy. Like if you're a fan, then you can, you're just floating on a cloud. You're going to see, you know, um, Joni Mitchell or, uh, and I realized the day I stopped being able to be a fan like that of anyone in the world. I don't know where that comes from was a bit of a sad day because I wouldn't have that availability of, of energy anymore. But um, but at the time, I was really excited to see Joni Mitchell, like that breathless, oh, you know, feeling. And um, maybe there were a few other people there, but it's all, um, it's, it's all strange because we're all like everyday people and we're all like trained in elevating ourselves too so it's a mishmash and it was really fun of course it, it, uh, it certainly was long be. ago I, I really not part of my thinking or world at all now but if you want to know I'll remember for you <laughs> um, my favorite song of yours was Ingrid and the Footman from uh, uh, um, The Walking which you had mentioned um, it just struck a chord for me back then but I, I'm sure you've been told uh, many times how great Calling All Angels is, how, how beautiful that song is. Um, to me, it's one of the most beautiful songs ever written. When you were writing that song, hearing you and Katie Lang's voices together is something, I mean, I you can't imagine that song being sung by anyone else but the two of you. Uh, when, when you were writing that song, did you have in mind her singing it with you or was that something that happened after the fact? After. Have you heard, um... Living Statue, that's the second duet I've done with her, and it's I think it's just as beautiful. Um, it was on Ulysses' Purse, or Angels Bend Closer. That was in... Uh, it, Ulysses' Purse is the best one. It's the director's vision, and then people on Angels Bend Closer took it and brought her voice closer up to the front of the song. Fair enough, but they the, then the words didn't make sense to me anymore, but... Mm -hmm. I was curious to see what would happen, and I would say that some it was less than what I would want people to hear. But yeah, her voice is. Um, every time I've recorded with her, it's shocking. You go through the tracks, you solo them, the, the bass, drums, my voice, blah blah blah. Then you hit the track and solo her voice. It's electrifying. Mm -hmm. It's um, and and I think what makes something electrifying is how much of the blend of everyday person and soul is like and her soul is so very embedded in her voice um more than a lot of people's soul is so that's what gives the extra electromagnetic charge i think that goes into our ears and and affects us but it's beautiful i don't know what she's doing now are you going to interview her like we, I, I'd like to. <laughs> I've sent a, I've sent a request. Um, <laughs> she's a, she's a beautiful singer, and 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 uh, 
I'm a big fan. In person, of yeah. Um, before the pandemic, uh, you were doing something online um, that that I had seen online, uh, Solidarity Tuesdays, I believe, and you were yeah. doing a lot of discussion, a lot of um, uh, having guests on with you and that kind of thing, and and sort of going through spiritual um, and and a lot of other uh, topics um, from race, religion, all that stuff. Is that something you're still doing? Is that something you're still interested in? Yeah, of course. I'm not doing it overtly anymore, though. Um, it felt like it had had its time. So just quietly. And um, I did a, um, a meditation the other night when, when the war started because it's not it's not coming from, oh, um, I have something important to say. It's more like, okay, I'll be the organizer, but we really need to create a circle and remind ourselves of what posture we need to be helpful from afar, which I really believe in, which is... Um, training now like 20 years ago like or 30 people starting to do the new age thing and that was really exciting except i i didn't like it that's why i took a science degree so i could like build from the ground up instead of a lot of um not so substantial statements being proclaimed um so so but since then so many of us have worked on ourselves and modalities like for greater conscious communication and um, so many people have not just learned massage but all kinds of things like it's an amazing stream of people now and in coming into um, be bearing fruits that can be you know drop on the ground and nourish the tree again I don't know um, so so I just wanted to you know gather people who are interested in um, holding space um, like we do what we can on a physical level but I do think holding not being anxious means that we can um, know, know how to get into our clear space that's calm and with intent projected over to that part of the world to in case it helps people over there hold space they say oh yeah 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 what am I watching tv for I've got to stay calm for my family and for all the people around me and as a result this energy also affects so much I think like and and maybe someday we'll be at the point where we can actually immobilize soldiers with the power of our hearts and the right way to be on this planet or or sending energy to Putin um to that some part of his own inner divine um wakes up a tiny bit and he says what am i doing mm -hmm. and having the strength to say i'm wrong and changing i don't know i think there's so much exciting stuff that's happening and going to happen that we've never seen before but i think it's going to be along those lines um the, the last two years obviously have been challenging for everybody uh being being at home not being able to tour work uh, stuff that you're used to doing um have you spent any of that time uh, what have you been doing i mean have you been writing have you been uh, creating painting uh new records coming as a like what's coming from jane sippery next um i really enjoyed the time i liked being in one space and having all my things in one room without any leaks of traveling and stuff um, so I I did a lot of meditations at the beginning because people were like um, a lot of people don't know how to meditate so we just did really simple ones training and every night we'd reset remember this is how you can um, access your own strength and you know trust your intuition that's your bridge to your higher self and what I believe anyway always saying you know it's up to you but trust yourself to know what you believe sort of idea um, so I did a lot of meditations, um, and uh, I took a lot of courses. Um, I took two sync licensing courses, knowing that that's probably one of the best ways for a musician to sustain themselves. Not that I got any placements, but um, learned a lot about it. And um, took courses, I've been taking courses on all kinds of things like health and breathing and um, songwriting and oh yeah I gave a songwriting course for two weeks um, yeah I've been, I've been really busy and 
very interested in watching everybody and you know trying to um, hold space for the much much less for fortunate people who had families and no money and you know possible eviction like I've never been tested that way I don't know how it would be but I, I certainly did feel for them and you know do my best to like you know help out where I could um, and writing uh, songs, yeah, yeah, and writing songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, out of my, uh, the biggest song is one that's I sort of call, "We're So Sick," you know, because I see see this whole two year thing, as coming from a, an inner sickness. You know, we are so spoiled and um, so accepting of self absorption and selfishness being acceptable mm -hmm. and um and i really you just can't keep going when i was on tour the last tour was i think seven months all over the world i kept thinking whenever i go to big city i said there are too many people here this is it's too much mm -hmm. everything is too much and it's scary and i really don't want oh yeah now i now i call the song uh, Atlantis the sequel you know do we want to be Atlantis the sequel and just go right to the wall till we knock ourselves out and earth has to like shake us off um, or can we be like the whole new civilization that finally after so many failures of other civilizations finally could turn things around how how amazing would that be how part the first civilization ever if we could be part of it with everything we know now um yeah so that kind of song was really in my heart i didn't write things and put them out or anything but mm -hmm. it's all over my walls and i i hope to um complete it at the right point um i i, I thank you so much for being with us um I, I i'm so thankful for you and for your music and and uh oh thank you uh, I'm really happy I was able to chat with you today. Uh, thank you for joining us on The Record Player. Stay safe, and, and hopefully we'll catch up down the road, and we hope to get you back out on a stage. I, I can't wait to see you perform again. Thank you. All the best to you and everyone who's watching, too. Thank you so Always. much, Jean. Take care. <laughs>